I thought this video was really interesting to play because I thought this was an indication on maybe the price of fame, the actual real price of fame and what people are actually willing to do for it. Because I feel like there was a weird kind of press around Kim Kardashian when she went on, I think she was doing like an interview for Time magazine and she let slip during the interview that, oh, no, I think one of the questions from the crowd actually was, did you ever see like an end? like a you know a retirement plan from being kim kardashian and essentially she basically tried to lie and say yeah i'm not going to do this forever i've got other things i want to do blah, blah blah which to me i think is a lie and it's unnecessary lie because i think you, you know any person with a brain can look at kim kardashian one time and know that this person was born to be in front of the cameras right was born to be whatever she is an influencer a mogul a media person like she's this is what her life has always been about. There's video footage of this girl when she's like a fucking child. Do you know what I mean? Performing in front of camera and wanting to be famous and shit. And that's always been her kind of number one goal. And she achieved it, right? She completed every single level of being famous. She kind of went to the top of the mountain. And I just don't think someone like that gives it up. She kind of loves the intention clearly, loves whatever comes of it, good and the bad. So I don't think there's anything wrong in just saying that, no, this is what I love to do and I'm going to die, quote unquote, on stage. But I think in this type of era we live in at the moment, you kind of, it's maybe isn't the, maybe people don't really, it's not the chicest thing to do to kind of embrace the fact that you're a fame whore. Like people don't like that. Um, or to kind of be unapologetically you. You kind of have to always pretend that you've got more to you. There's more layers. Sometimes just what you have should be good enough. And if it's just, you know, blatant materialism, if it's whatever else you got going on, like that should be good enough. You shouldn't need to kind of invent this whole other thing going on so you can kind of give yourself more layers, like the whole lawyer thing and shit. It's just weird. But anyway, that was something. So on top of that, she also did some press for the up and coming new season, I think for the Keeping Up with Kardashian show. And part of the up and coming season promo was this really interesting clip where she speaks about her relationship with Kanye West or lack thereof and the damage um, he did in terms of spreading the rumours about her hooking up with Drake. And I feel like this is a really good clip, interesting clip to play because it is a really good illustration as to the actual real life cost of fame because after all these years, after all of Kim Kardashian's successes in business, in media, with her family life, whatever it may be, this whole sex tape with Ray J thing is still something that looms over her head. And it's something that she could never shake for whatever reason. She keeps getting reminded about it. It's obviously something that clearly still annoys her, even though it's something that her and her mum clearly did on purpose to try and propel her career, which is not a bad thing because I still remember at that time that she was coming up. People forget this, but the whole sex tape, personal sex tape thing was a thing back then to kind of boost your career and whatnot. Just for them, it just went super, super viral. But it was something that everyone kind of done. And it sort of was a deal with the devil that they kind of did at the time, wanting to be successful more than anything. And it obviously worked. But for some reason, nowadays, it's seen as a really big slight and it's something to kind of a mark to put on her sheet that she's got this thing out there and it's something that she could for never can shake no matter what the fucking succession she has in life which is kind of sad i feel like because i feel like she's done enough nowadays to sort of like remove that sort of like smudge or whatever you may be from her name in general but let's play the clip anyway this is kim kardashian talking about um kanye and the damage of him spreading the rumors about her hooking up with drake all of the craziness everything that kanye says about us like I never comment. I never post. Like, he has made up the most insane narrative about yeah. you and the tape, and we stay silent. We stay silent. But the funny thing about staying silent, I don't really get. If the staying silent thing doesn't help them, because I feel like the staying silent thing, they kind of played into it a little bit. It was kind of beneficial to Kris Jenner's image to be portrayed as this, like, cougar woman who may or may not hooked up with Drake. It was beneficial at the time for them to play up to the idea that Drake may have fucked Kim behind Kanye's back, especially when she was going through a period of not liking Kim because Kanye, Drake is like Kanye's mortal enemy for some reason. Like they kind of played into it a little bit, I feel like. But then when it clearly underneath it all, playing into it or not, it's something that clearly does annoy her. It gets under her skin completely. But I feel like they should have cleared it up. If it really wasn't true and it was actually creating some real life damage, they should have cleared it up. But they didn't because it was benefiting them in terms of their bottom line. 
That's a brutal honest. Through all the lies, all the stuff. But you, you can't control somebody else. You know, he's doing this to himself. But even just like how he looks so down on me for like my tape and brings it up all over town, all over the media. Like, so this is definitely a thing that Kanye was doing. <laughs> but that's the thing as well about Kanye that I could never really excuse to be fair as well. That kind of made me look at him a bit of a weird way. Most of us in the pub, in the public knew this was always going to be doomed, right? The, from how Kanye acts and speaks and how the Kardashians kind of go about their lives, not to judge either party, but we just knew that this marriage or this kind of matrimony or this family was doomed. It was never going to last. Cool. But I've always kind of looked at Kanye a little bit beside that, thinking, bro, you actively went after this lady, knowing her past, knowing her history knowing everything that she's done beforehand. You actively spoke glowingly and well of her. You actively, you actively kind of looked the other way when it came to the tape and then suddenly when it benefited you and when you didn't like her anymore, suddenly the tape became an issue. So that's the thing that I've always kind of felt a little bit distasteful about Kanye in that regard. Like you married her knowing what she's about and then suddenly when you married her, you want to start, I don't know what he's wanting to do, covering, especially when he went through his whole like conversion to flipping Christianity, he went to like covering up and stuff and we didn't want her to do certain magazines with Malaki. It's like, bro, you know what you married into, like let her live. You, don't, you shouldn't be like too controlling, but hey, what do I know? Thanks for reminding people once again, all of his shenanigans, I don't even know what the f to call Rhetoric. it. Rhetoric. Is going to be far more damaging to the kids one day than my tape will ever be that's right i don't believe that to be fair and I, I don't think she believes that i don't think in general unfortunately i think because i'm interested to see actually what happens because we haven't actually had it just yet have we? we haven't actually had the generation of girls who are involved in sex work on only fans and who then eventually go on to have families i think we have it already with like um adam 22's wife adam um leonard the plug they, they 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 have a kid together they recently got married so they kind of you know are the maybe the first generation of that i can think of but i can't think of many only fans people who are young and have kind of got married and had kids we just see how that kind of plays out because you would imagine any kid who has a mom online i think more so women and men unfortunately who has an explicit sex tape about them it's definitely going to be a point of contention we already see the damage it done to their family when i think it was it's saint right one of the kids from their family um was playing roblox and somebody in there i guess must have seen that it was saint and kind of posted the video on the roblox thing because i think roblox is like i don't know maybe you can post videos and shit somebody did something that had a link to the sex tape so it's already causing an issue now where they're young and not really knowing what's going on. So you can only imagine how as it progresses as it gets older, it's probably going to be a, a problem because a lot of kids, you know, as many kids are going to be supporting their parents, there's also going to be kids who are going to grow up and just be like completely different from their parents in every way, shape or form. So I feel like them seeing a sex tape of their mum online is definitely far more damaging than their dad you know having some <laughs> dilly dances with anti-semitism and being a fan of hitler and shit i reckon really reckon the tape is going to be more damaged and you already can see it from how they're responding they're responding in a way where the tape is definitely more harmful it's caused them more harm than what kanye said they're not sitting down here talking about the damaged it caused them as a family to have kanye run around town acting like a you know a, a flipping holocaust denier they're speaking more about the damage of him spreading the rumor that she fucked Drake. So clearly, this is an issue. And this is somebody that kind of embraces their sexuality, is free to be naked and embrace them, blah, blah, blah. But still, when people talk out of turn about these sort of things, it clearly gets under her skin. Right. And I have to sit here and not say anything ever because I know one day my kids will appreciate that and the one that was supposed to protect me and still does interviews saying they will be my forever protector <laughs> is the one that is hurting me the most he was the one that started a rumor that said i was having hooking up with drake having an affair a whole marriage she accused me of that publicly i'm not too sure if that's true to be fair in a narrative of things i'm not sure if that's true i think a lot of fans were trying to figure out what Kanye's actual problem with Drake was because it just seemed weird because at one point it seemed like Drake was really infatuated with Kanye he looked up to him he was being really kind of like you know glowing in praise of him giving me flowers at every occasion but it seemed like Kanye had a real issue with the fact that Drake was the number one guy right the guy that 
all the girls liked, the guy that all the guys wanted to be like and shit. He just had a real issue with that. And the fact that he was being played everywhere and he maybe felt that some of the bars that Drake was spitting had subliminals against him and shit. And then I guess the real story around it is that some it was something involving a track that Drake wanted um, Kanye to get on. He didn't get on it. He then puts it out as that poopity scoop thing. And then the whole issue with Pusha T starts where Pusha T finds out about Drake's secret kid. And Drake makes the correlation that he just told Kanye about his secret kid recently. And he felt that, you know, Kanye was going back behind his back and feeding Pusha T info about him. So that was it. But I think fans were trying to figure out what was going on. And one of the hypotheses or theories out there was that, oh, Drake must have fucked Kim. That's the only thing that would have sent Kanye into a tizzy if he found out the person that he hated as a rapper also had fucked his baby mother's or wife behind his back. That would really kind of get under his skin. And I think Drake obviously played into it. He didn't deny it because he knew how much anguish it was causing Kanye but I don't think it was a rumor that he was starting and if anything he was also trying to I feel like get clarification and find out if it was true behind the scenes because I think Drake told him flat out it wasn't from what we heard from Ye I think on Drink Champs he basically said yeah he asked he asked Drake and he said no I didn't but I don't think he believed him so he was probably you know floating it around town and saying you know asking questions at dinner parties and whatnot because he really wanted clarification because he didn't believe the woman and stuff so but again, I don't think it's fair to say Kanye started it. But, you know, again, you can see this gets under her skin. Like, it definitely is a thing. So the person that's supposed to protect me the most publicly would accuse me of having an affair throughout our whole marriage. I really can't wrap my head around yeah. how he thinks he is a protector. You know, at some time. And that's that's the things I, I agree with her in that one. I think, you know, if this is actually causing your wife at the time anguish and pain, you should go out your way to kind of try and, you know, quell all that stuff and be protecting as you can in that way. But maybe his way of protecting Kanye at the time was what he said was his protecting way where I think he organized with WAC, 20, WAC 100 to get the last piece of footage of the tape off from him and shit so no one could put it out and he spoke to Ray J. So maybe in his own way, Kanye feels like he was protecting her by not allowing more BTS extra footage to kind of come out from that sex tape from back in the day with Ray J. But at the time, you know, it is what it is. They were going through a pretty disastrous breakup. But again, this is the price of fame. I feel like people don't really speak about often because Kim is like the most famous person in the world, maybe the most famous person in the world. But she had to make a deal with the devil when she first started out to kind of get that little pop to kind of really go viral. And she basically rid that way for, you know, 20, two plus decades and has become incredibly successful rich and famous because of it but it's still an odd cloud that hangs over her head and i'm really interested as to why that's the case because i feel like nowadays sex work and sex tapes and all this sort of stuff is not as much of a faux pas as it was yesteryears like i don't think people really give a shit anymore if a guy's fucking dick pic leaks or a woman's nude leaks but you know back in the day when the fappening happened and people were hacking into celebrity celebrity people's iClouds and leaking their nudes and shit that was a big deal it still is a big deal don't get me wrong but it was a real career shaming ender type of thing but i don't think it is anymore so it's really interesting to see that despite all the changes in culture all the changes that we're having as a society and what we kind of deem to be acceptable or not acceptable there's still this shame attached to that sex tape that she had with somebody that she in a relationship and again this isn't a sex tape with some random guy in a porn studio she was dating Ray J at the time this is a sex tape between two people who are in a relationship it shouldn't be that big of an issue but it clearly is a big issue for her and she can't shake it off and it probably doesn't help that Kanye <laughs> the father of her children and her ex-husband is definitely somebody who's perpetuating this thing and pushing it out there in the long run but I think she's delusional she thinks that Kanye's love of Hitler is way more harmful for the kids than her sex type because clearly the sex type is an issue because there's a whole generation of kids out there also who are anti only fan girls and don't think they're worthy of having you know having kids or having a, you know a stable relationship they think they're bottom of the barrel women all this sort of weird narrative that exists out there right um there's the kind of fresh and fit way of kind of looking at women if that's the case then that is kind of the case, isn't it? You kind of have to kind of play your cards as you're dealt with them, kind of. You have to kind of hope in that regard.